So I thought I'd probably record this in real time um, just to kind of show you because this is the stage where I'm putting just the base layers down um, very, very, very lightly. So you can already see from the colors I've done that um, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the reference photo and trying to see where light is hitting um, our dog's nose. So with noses or anything that's really shiny in general, what you tend to see is there's a lot of reflection. And so if the animal's outside, you're going to get a lot of ref a reflection from, say, sunlight in the sky. So you're going to see a lot of blues and you're going to see potentially some warmer colours. And those warmer colours will be things like the yellows and pinks and stuff like that. Um, the actual finer details I don't put into closer to the end. So that's things like there'll be scaling. If anyone's looked closely at a dog's nose, you'll see that around this area and around the edges of the nostril, there's a bit of scaling and stuff going on. So the shape of the dog nose really is something to kind of also look at because some photos of dogs, um, especially if you're doing a portrait and you're trying to match it as close as possible, sometimes the noses are not very visible. And in some cases, you can't even see the nostril area at all. So... What I would do in that case is I would add the detail in. If the animal's already in a dark area where that detail, detail wouldn't be visible to begin with, then I'm obviously not going to do it then. It depends on what the lighting is and what makes sense um, based on what the portrait is that you're actually trying to do. So in this particular case, the detail is I'm lightening the image up. It's supposed to be outside, so... Um, I'll be adding detail in that isn't quite as visible in the reference photo, but it'll still make logical sense. Now, the other thing is something I've talked about before, which is the trick your brain plays on you about what it thinks it sees in terms of colour. So in theory, when someone's looking at the finished drawing here, um, when I do finish her, that they're going to look at this nose and think that it's um, black. The reality is, as you can see in the under, under layers here, there's, well, there is a little bit of black, like I put black in the nostrils, but it's lots of blues. I'm using dark indigo. This one is a, ultra, a light ultramarine. Um, there's bits of yellows. For instance, I'll put a bit of yellow in here now. I just saw in the reference photo before I layer too much color in. Um, yeah, so there's a whole heap of different colors. And so the final image, if you were to put this into photo, like say pretend I finished it and you put it into Photoshop and you get the color picker tool and you hover over it, there won't be, I don't think there will be any black visible in it. It'll actually in all reality be different colors. It would be mixtures of grays and things like that. Um, depending how dark I achieve the nostrils, that might come up as black, but the reality is it's more that your brain will think that it's black because logically it's looking at a dog and your brain makes a whole lot of adjustments based on what it sees um, to make sense of what it sees. So like right here, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but this might look like black, but it's actually warm grey 6. Um, and I'm just layering that in very lightly. In terms of pressure, I'm putting down... a I know I've, I saw someone else use this analogy or this example, and I think it's really kind of perfect. It's about the same pressure as if I was drawing on a tomato and I didn't want to damage the skin. I don't know why you draw on a tomato, but I thought it was actually when I imagined the pressure I would be using if I were, I thought, you know what, that's actually kind of a good analogy. So I'm just lining up here because I've got a bit of dark bit here. I'm just checking my proportions because I've left this space clear. I'm just making sure that this all lines up. So even after you've done the sketch, the rendering is still very important to make sure that the proportions all line up, and this is how I do it. Yep, so that's safe to colour in. So what I'm doing, um, yeah, again, I'm sorry if my brain jumps around with my narration here, but what you just saw me doing here with my pencil doing this, in my head um, I kind of have pretend guidelines down on the paper. Um, when I'm actually drawing the sketch, obviously guidelines will be down there. I'll be drawing like a grid, not a grid, but like, well, in some cases I do a grid, but I might draw lines around the eyes or I'll draw like a box for where the nose will be. And then I'll, you know, um, fill that in a bit more. And so it actually goes from looking like a square box to an actual nose. Um, but what you just saw me doing there where I was doing this. So on the reference photo, I can see the edge of this dark bit. I can see on the photo, 
if I go directly horizontal out, it goes to the edge of her mouth and eyeballing that, it's about 50-55% between the corner of her tongue and the tip of her mouth. So for me, obviously everyone works a bit differently. I work in percentages. Um, my brain's just, I guess, numbers work for me. As some people, I guess it doesn't really work for them and that's fine. Everyone's brains are a little bit different. Um, for me, I look at everything kind of as numbers. Um, I mean, I'm also a science teacher and a maths teacher, so maybe that's why. But so when I'm looking at it, it's sort of like I'm seeing how everything lines up in proportion to everything else. So when I, if I was to be drawing um, something completely freehand, say I wasn't even using a ruler, but you know, it's kind of silly not to use that if you need it. I just would use it if I did. But say I was going to doing something completely freehand or even when I'm rendering and I'm trying to do some of this freehand, um, yeah, I use ratios and proportions. So I will use a circle or a square as my initial um, thing to work with, considering a circle and a square are even inside. Sometimes I'll use a triangle as well, an equilateral triangle, um, depending on what it is that I'm using and I'll be drawing that directly sometimes onto the reference picture and then building the picture out from that I guess I'm aware that that might not make sense might not make much sense with me just telling you about it, it might be easier for me to show it I might do another video showing that but um yeah it's probably the easiest way to explain it I guess is I use a lot of shapes so um, if you've ever had a commission off me and I've shown you a very, very early sketch up, I try to remove the guidelines when I show clients with a sketch up because it's very, very messy. And in some cases, it just looks like a bunch of squiggles, but you can make out the outline of what it is I will be drawing. Um, but yeah, sometimes I have sent it to clients still with all my shapes and guidelines all over it because that's how I ensure the proportions and ratios are correct. Um, so like I said, I, you know, I looked at this, the bottom bit of where this dark bit is, draw a horizontal line out and see roughly how far up the mouth it goes. So I know how far down to draw it in terms of going this way. So you've got a horizontal line, vertical line. So the corner of this, if I draw a direct line up, I can see where it is spaced between the eyes and as a percentage of how far away from the eyes it is, is how I'll decide how far over to draw it. So um, I guess if you, anyone ever uses the grid method, it's basically the same thing just without drawing the grid lines down. Um, I, even artists I know who, you know, look like they are completely freehanding it. In some cases they are, in some cases it's muscle memory and they literally are doing that. For things like horses, I, I do that because when I was a kid I drew so many horses that eventually it did become muscle memory when I was drawing a profile image of just a standard non-draft horse draft horses because the body shapes are a little bit different i still do reference them because they can also be very they can change but if it was say a thoroughbred um the proportions i'd be you know free handing and i wouldn't really be doing any guidelines but especially if you're drawing from something in real life you're going to be using references um if you're drawing still life or you're drawing something live or plain air or whatever um i like I'm sure there are artists out there that do it. I'm not going to be silly enough to say that they don't exist. The statistical likelihood of that's unlikely that there is no artist who does this, but I would argue that pretty much all artists use some sort of guide or tool to assist them, whether it's their, they could be using their fingers, they might use their nail, they might use a pencil, um, they might just be draw, do what I do where I, I kind of draw it out like this and go, oh, okay, it's about here. So here at the light centre of the tongue line, it's roughly middle of the nostril, so that's why I've drawn it here. And then you've got the um, the middle of the palate here, very faint line here on the pup. So that's not the centre of the tongue. However, there is another shadow that's a, a roughly around here. But I still consider that tool used to a certain extent. I'm using markers on the page. I'm using, you know, shadows and light and colour to know where to draw each of the things. And as you've you know, been watching me for almost 10 minutes I've just been talking um, yeah you can sort of see that I'm working in very small layers now most of the base layers are now down 
So now I would say I'm adding in mid-tone layers. So this is where I'm pressing just a little bit firmer, but still not heaps because I still want a lot of tooth in that paper, which is why it looks grainy still. When I'm done, this pretty much you won't see any graininess. It'll be nice and smooth where I want it to be smooth and it will show the, the scaling, detailing and the highlights and stuff where I want there to be highlights. Now, I've left blank a lot of the edge around the nostril because what I'm about to do now is my last coat of middle um, tone, which is that blue. And then when I go over it in the gray, which I'm about to do now, so this is a colder, a cold gray, putting that down there. Now I'm actually gonna put what you might think is too dark, but again, when we're talking about the illusion of color, even though this is a cold gray four, when I do the black around it, this is actually going to go from looking darkish to actually quite light relative to the black that's about to go down. So this is a burnish. This pressure I'm putting down would be what I would put down for a top layer. But I'm doing it here now because I am I know I'm not going to add any other colors or layers here. So there's absolutely no point in me preserving that um, tooth of the paper. I'm now able to go down quite hard and I'm doing that with the, um, so this one is warm gray six. So I had the cool grays go down before and now that I'm actually burnishing, which is pressing the tooth down a bit more, I can move it out a little bit. Okay, now I'm not gonna do that at the top because I am gonna do scale details, which is what dogs have on their nose. But because of the lighting, down here you actually wouldn't see the de there's still scaling on the dog's nose down here but because of where the light is hitting it you actually wouldn't see it in reality based on the angle of where this dog is so i'm not drawing it in it just wouldn't make sense like you know when you're looking at it even though i'm kind of adding this detail in you still got to add it in a way that physically makes sense for the way that the light bounces off the target and off the subject Okay, so I still haven't have to come up here, so I'm going to color this one in. Okay, now the pink that I laid down as a base coat is now starting to show up. I'm going to burnish with a bit more pink. And I'm just doing very small strokes. Because I want the final product to look smooth, if you do long strokes, it doesn't really work that well. Very small strokes, and in some cases, circular motions. Okay, we're still going. So I'm just doing literally the base of this puppy's nostrils. I say puppy, but she was an old girl. Okay. And yeah, I still have tooth left. So when I do the final thing on the top, I actually might put a little bit of scaling here and here where the light is hitting because you will see a bit of the scale detail coming through. I know they're not really scales, I'm just saying scale because um, the pattern that they make, I know that mammals don't have scales. But yeah, so a little bit of burnishing. Okay, now I can see that the I've done a uh, bit of a dark line here, a bit darker than I wanted to. So I'm just blending that out. Okay, so the base of the nose is now starting to be done. So this is the bit that the muzzle comes down here and then you have the top of the nose, which acts, it will curve a bit on the edges, but it's relatively, it is in line with the dog's snout. Here is the line of where it comes down over the muzzle and where it's no longer, it's sort of where the shape changes. So here is where the bend is in the nose. And I'll be using the rendering and the lighting to make it look like that's happening. Okay, but yeah, so there's just a little, I've still got a long way to go. This is what, almost 15 minutes now of showing you just the little tail, uh, tip bit of the nose. And I still haven't fully laid all of this in yet, but this just gives you a rough idea of, yeah, why pen, I guess pencil work is a very slow process because you're building, building layers, but I absolutely love it. I love color, which is interesting because even I get clients who say, oh, but you know, is it okay that my pet is completely white or completely black and I say look you might think that it's completely black or completely white but have a look and see how many colors I'll be putting into it it's not actually 
completely black or white. But yeah, I hope this has been interesting. If you've stuck around for 15 minutes, good on you. <laughs> I know it's not everyone's cup of tea to do this, but who would I just share? <laughs>